And Jim, uh, Jim Clemente joins me now. He's a former FBI profiler, a former prosecutor, and a writer, producer for Criminal Minds on CBS. Uh, Jim, thanks for being with us. Um, this new body cam uh, video that we were just uh, taking a look at, there's been a lot of criticism that the officers may have missed some textbook uh, signs of abuse. Um, when you watch it, what does your FBI training and experience tell you? And can we really give these officers that hard of a time when I'm sure they just deal with these kinds of situations all the time? Yeah, I don't think we need to give them such a hard time, but I think we should use it as a learning opportunity. I mean, there were signs here, nuanced signs, of course, of control. That is that she kind of took on all the blame. He put all the blame on her. But there are definitely places where he was caught lying and they didn't pick up on it. The fact that he said she yanked the, the steering wheel, she actually only hit his arm. The fact that he said he was they were both going to go for a walk, but actually the witnesses say that he was in the vehicle and locking her out and trying to get her phone and hitting her. So all those things add up to me that this is an abusive relationship, but he's the aggressor. He's the one trying to control her, and she is actually being controlled by him, which is why she didn't want to call out what he had done to her. Yeah, I, I think it's puzzling how the officers just sort of automatically took his word for it in the situation. Uh, when clearly she lo she looks distraught in that video. Um, let me move on to something else. Uh, CNN obtained a uh, record showing that Brian Laundrie's mother canceled a camping reservation made for two people uh, right before Brian returned home without Gabby. She then made a new reservation later that week for three people and Laundrie uh, went with them as did his sister. Um, how important do you think that camping trip is going to be in all of this? It, it sounds strange. It does sound strange to me, Jim. Basically, if you know a young lady who lives with you is missing, not missing down the block or missing around the corner, but missing over 2,000 miles away, and then you decide to go on a camping trip knowing that she's not around, not knowing what's happening to her, not telling her parents that you don't know where she is, that's some really suspicious behavior to me. And it tells me that either they had no concern at all about her or they may have already known what her fate was. And, and what do you make of the fact that Brian Laundry uh, bought a new phone right after he returned, from what we understand, uh, but then left it behind? Uh, it sounds like he's on the run. Yeah. Um, the fact that he bought a new phone, uh, you know, people get burner phones all the time, uh, a phone that isn't necessarily attributed to him. But he went to AT&T to get this phone, so it sounds like this, this is a phone with a plan. The thing is, he could have taken out the SIM card from that phone and left the phone there and then plugged that SIM card into any other phone that, that accepts a SIM and use that phone wherever the hell he is. And I think that, that may be what happened here. The fact that the FBI now have the phone doesn't mean that he didn't take it with him and leave it in his car at the at the uh, preserve where his car was found. I think there's a lot of information that the family isn't sharing. And unfortunately, it just opens up more and more questions about their behavior. And there have been so many theories about where he could be as a, as a former FBI profiler. How, how do you narrow this down? Do you have any hunches? I do. Uh, you know, with the time that's elapsed and the fact that nobody has seen him in a in a location that they thought he was in. I think he could have made it to the Appalachian Trail. That's 2,200 miles of trails through mountains and ravines. There are caves, there are valleys, there are thick wooded places where he could hide. People spend months there on the camping trails. And I think that is probably the kind of location where he will be found. He'll eventually have to come forward to get food or water or he will just be seen by somebody passing by. Yeah, I would, I would assume by this point he has run across, if he's still alive and on the run, uh, that he has run across another human being. And because of the uh, nature of this case, and so many people have, have talked about it and seen it, um, I, I would have to think somebody has recognized him. But what about this uh, search at the Carlton Nature Reserve in Florida? Was that just a waste <laughs> of time? Well... If it rules out him being there, then it wasn't a waste of time because that had to be done. It was the last yeah. known place where he was reportedly seen or where he was traveling to. So you have to rule that out. It just happens to be a very difficult place to search. And there's a lot of perils there, uh, the water, the animals. So we don't know if he was there and 
and met his demise. Or if he went and if he used that as a diversionary tactic, like he did leaving the van where Gabby's body was and then hitchhiking away from it, it could very well be that that Mustang was left there because he actually went in the opposite direction. And Gabby Petito's family attorney, they made a direct plea to Brian Laundrie this week. Let's, let's listen to that. For the Laundrie's silence, the Laundrie's did not help us find Gabby. They're sure as not going to help us find Brian. For Brian, we're asking you to turn yourself in to the FBI or the nearest law enforcement agency. That attorney also said the FBI had asked them not to discuss the relationship between the Petitos and the, and the Laundries. Uh, why would that be? Well, there's certain information you want to hold back. If, if they give all this information out over the air, then Brian or somebody who wants to help Brian will be aware of that. And it's sometimes very necessary to really limit the information out there so you can actually conduct the investigation have positive results in the investigation and not taint a, a further criminal investigation or criminal case after that. All right, Jim Clementi, uh, thanks so much for the, those insights, that expertise. Great talking to you. Appreciate it very much.